and now I'll be talking about uh, how we do it uh, here in a Taltec Microfluidics Laboratory. And this will cover the droplet microfluidics for single cell analysis and the droplet images or uh, how we obtain the images and then the pipeline itself. Here is the example of header resistance at the single cell level that uh, usually we have these petrogen systems and we culture and put the antibiotics there but instead of using uh, this system we use the uh, droplets here and we can use uh, microfluidics to generate uh, these droplets or just use a vortex to uh, generate the polydispersed droplet and using uh, these we can uh, encapsulate bacteria uh, within uh, uh, droplets and we can see whether they grow or not and here's the example that uh, if it grows then it has the green kind of fluorescence and if it's not or empty droplets then it's just uh, the yellow one and yeah it can be uh, fluorescence like this so like I said uh, when it has the bacteria then it has this uh, green fluorescence but it can be like uh, other color or using like other dye here like there is a red dye or just a bright field so yeah you can't really see it maybe but uh, if you zoom in there is some kind of black kind of dot inside the droplets and some without uh, uh, objects or bacteria here uh, it's just a droplet and about the image of uh, the, or like droplet image as you can see here is that uh, you can distinguish with your own eyes but uh, what about the data itself uh, basically there are some components that you need to see here there is a background and there is a, a droplet with bacteria that's kind of uh, widely spread or droplet with uh, bacteria or another one with uh, uh, some kind of scattered culture and empty droplets so we are talking about the image analysis in a droplet then uh, we need to segment at least these kind of four objects but uh, to simplify these things is that at least you can segment between the background and the droplet that's the first step to see and yeah after you have this image uh, you expect to have a histogram that is kind of uh, easier to work with rather than like uh, the data uh, of in an image and from the histogram we want to use the software that is available uh, and we put some modules there, construct the modules uh, or like necessary modules and at the end we expect to have uh, these results and from histogram we can define the objects like uh, previously we want to let's say segment the background and the droplets and then from the droplets we can select between here uh, the negative droplets and the positive droplets so yeah flashback <laughs> getting back to these slides again like uh, yeah uh, there are quite many software out there and if you can script or like do programming then it's much easier but then there is uh, some for software that is already user-friendly so you can just uh, optimize uh, them and find a suitable kind of components and construct your own workflow and here's uh, our uh, recent work that uh, we try to uh, choose the most favorite kind of software in the uh, like out there using uh, Twitter and some uh, published article 
and we got uh, these for software like CP for cell profiler, IJ for image J, LA for elastic, and QPath for QP. And basically from uh, these uh, favorite software, as you can see here, they have uh, uh, different kind of uh, components and construct uh, different pipeline. But they host a similar kind of uh, principle in a pre-processing, processing and post-processing. And we try to uh, kind of uh, classify them into these uh, role base and machine learning base. As you can check that the role base is more like a, uh, if you have a numeric parameter about the threshold and, and the size or like um, other components while in the machine learning you can if you have an image then you can select for instance there is these uh, droplets in the uh, background then you can select uh, this one or annotate this one as a droplet and this one as a background and from there they'll put a classifier and find the uh, feature in the image and then they can help you with the uh, classifications. So yeah, in the other, uh, our recent work is that we use the cell profiler and cell profiler analysts to detect and classify uh, droplets. So we construct a pipeline using this software and then put the modules, like this is the uh, default modules. And then we add this first identify primary object and then other module to uh, measure the object and then export it to Excel and database for the classifications. And if you can see here as an input and then as a detected object here between the background and the object itself like droplets. And yeah, this is just uh, another example of this one, but in the outline and yeah, you can see here and they have these segmented droplets uh, in the image. And from here, uh, because uh, we export it to like other software, for instance, we use the cell profiler analyst, so we can classify uh, between this object and this object by uh, supervised machine learning. And then once we have a classifier that can classify this one, so we teach them to uh, recognize which one is a uh, droplet with the bacteria and the empty droplets. And then we run them to the, throughout the uh, images or set of image. And we can uh, detect like the whole classification from there. But you can always like just classify or hit the, the threshold like this one. And uh, not just with the fluorescent stacks, but also uh, we can use a bright field images or like here from uh, Burns et al. data. Uh, we did some analysis with the pipeline uh, because they have a multi kind of channel here that uh, they use a different dye as well. And we can uh, detect and calculate and classify uh, the different, uh, let's say, droplets in the image. And some other examples here uh, that uh, Fatih and Nathan use uh, kind of droplet entrapment uh, to, to isolate the droplets and then calculate it uh, calcul or like detect the droplets when it's trapped here. And it's quite unique because the pipeline is not starting just from the image, but uh, they also uh, designed the chip uh, to isolate or trap the droplets there. And yeah, this one is also the example of uh, the edge detector of the 
discontinuity uh, segmentation. And yeah, after you have the uh, detected droplets, then you can measure or like here, the example, they detect uh, the object inside the droplets. So if you can see it here, there's a blue and yellow, green here, that is uh, contained in the, or encapsulated in the droplets. And they use Python script to uh, detect the image. And at the end of the workflow, they can uh, define how many life cells, dead cells that is encapsulated in a droplet. And yeah, you saw this image uh, previously, and they use MATLAB and image J to uh, detect the droplets and segment one droplet and another. So yeah, it depends on the image or like the software that you prefer to have. Uh, but basically, uh, sometimes it needs uh, programming, even though image J is a bit user friendly, but when it comes to a batch processing, like you have to uh, provide the macro script there, and then uh, you can always use the help of uh, macro recording. So you just need to adjust the script there and then run uh, a single pipeline for the whole subset of image or in a batch processing. And here uh, is that uh, I just want to show that uh, the image that you saw is just this tiny part of the subset of image. So you can imagine like uh, how many images that uh, uh, you could get from uh, this huge uh, subset. And uh, They use uh, MATLAB to process the image and uh, detect the droplets here in uh, red lines. And yeah, it's still, uh, sometimes it requires some programming just to detect the droplet. So yeah, basically you've seen uh, uh, how we utilize the image analysis uh, to detect uh, droplets in our experiments. And there are some uh, or type of uh, different droplet images. And you've seen uh, some pipelines or workflow that works with programming or without a programming, for instance, in our case. And there are some uh, different types of uh, uh, programming language that has been used to like by other researcher like Python, MATLAB, and uh, some other. So I think that was all. Hopefully uh, the materials are kind of not confusing for you. And if you have some question, you can always uh, contact me. Thank you.